Chicago is famous for many things. Not all of them are worth celebrating. I've always felt that the so-called deep dish pizza was a crime against food. It wasn't pizza at all, I believe. Instead, some kind of Midwestern mutation of a pizza. According to Louisa Chu, friend, cook, and old associate from such shows as this one, I'm right, but also wrong. There is a place, she insists, that, that's an exception to the rule, a deep dish pizza that even I, who hate the very idea of such a thing, will love. Down a dark suburban street in the Morton Grove neighborhood of Chicago is Burt's Place. I'm a New Yorker, and I'm a New Yorker with a deep cultural aversion to pizza that is not New York pizza. Oh, boy, I knew we'd get one of these in here, sir. Bert Katz and his wife, Sharon, have been making a delightfully delicious artisanal product for over 40 years. I'm 71, for Christ's sake. It's still working like a dumbass. Of course, I immediately love Bert and Sharon, two iconoclastic obsessives who are clearly serious about their craft and their place. But somehow, it still just doesn't make sense. I'm befuddled. Chicago-style pan pizza or deep dish pizza, what is presumably good? Right. Generally speaking, the, it's, it's giant and filling. I right. mean, we're talking about like practically, you know, a, a casserole inside right. of a pizza. So it's like a pot pie. Exactly. Where we can basically jam in more cheese and more filling for the herd. You know, that, that, that's not a promising beginning. I mean, I, ju I just don't understand the criteria yet, but, but you're telling me I will when I eat this. You will. It's about the crust. It is about the crust. It is the main thing here. It's caramelized on the outside. I mean, completely around. On the bottom I mean, and up. Yeah, and the fillings are top-notch quality, fresh. Fresh spinach, mushrooms, peppers, bell peppers. I get along with pizza. I don't know. We become friends. I get along with it. He's like the chef in Paris who goes out and buys like his ingredients in small batches every single day. So That's and, something an Italian would do. Yeah. But this is not really an Italian creation. It's not. It's... Bert's sort of taken like the best qualities of like a classic Italian pizza and married them with a Chicago style deep dish pizza. And you love this stuff. I love it. You love this. I love this stuff. I, I'm still not understanding. I mean, look at those things. Yeah. They're gigantic. Where's all this pizza going? Well, okay, I get it. Yeah. These are not small people, are they? <laughs> people are crazy for this. Hundreds of diehard fans. No less serious a food publication than Sever put Burt's on the cover. Tonight, the place happens to be choked with handsomely plus-sized online food enthusiasts shoveling their fourth and fifth flagstone-sized portions down their magnificently nerdly gullets. We could talk about it and we can discuss it now. But I think... until we eat it, it's, exactly. it's, it's all it... meaningless blather. Yeah. I, I'm getting really hungry. Me too. I'm starving. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. That's a thing of beauty. Yeah, that's really nice. I get it. This, I really I understand it now. In uh, traditional Italian pizza and New, and New York utility pizza, you start at the filet in the center and you work out. This, you, you work in exactly the opposite direction. Well, that's here. why a lot of people bring their kids in here. Because kids don't eat crust, and the parents get all the crust. This well, year, was, there, was there a burning bush moment, you know, where you decided, first, I really need to make pan pizza, and I also need to make it really, really good? I, mean, I don't think I ever thought of it. I like being my own boss. I've worked corporate for about six years. I work corporate. It's the worst years of my life. I mean, I guess my question is, is you're doing good. People, I mean, cover them. Savoir. I'm sure the opportunity has arisen at some point that you could essentially walk away from the business and walk around in a sarong for the rest of your life. And, I like what I do. It's my customers. I got great customers, and I have a, it takes the stress of all the last two hours of being a nutbag in the kitchen. You can just sit and laugh and kid around. It's wonderful. Some people open a business for money. That's the wrong way. If I didn't like it, I'd walk away from it. Hands down, I'd walk away from it. I gotta admit, I like this stuff a lot. I think my problem was just calling it pizza. Whatever this is, I like it. Chicago. There's a lot that sets this city apart from every other city in this country. A lot that you'll find here that you won't find anywhere else. And I mean anywhere. As much as it pains me to say it, there's at least one area where Chicago far surpasses New York. 
And given my personal obsession with this particular item, it makes it all the more difficult for me to say that yes, Chicago has, hands down, a better hot dog than New York City. Now, anybody who's been following this show for any period of time at all knows that I love few things more than meat in tube form, and especially like local mutant forms of hot dogs. So when I realized I'd be doing a Chicago show, the location that went to the very top of the shoot list was this place, Hot Dogs Sausage Superstore, a nirvana for lovers of meat in tube form. The menu here ranges from exotic wild game and gourmet dogs to the simple pleasures of a flawlessly prepared Chicago Red Hot. I'm so hungry. I haven't had breakfast, I haven't had lunch. I've been like in training for this meal. And I'm not the only one. Check out this line of locals, not tourists, but locals, waiting to get in to experience hot dog perfection. I mean, this is kind of like, you know, hot dog city and, you know, look at us, we're all standing online. It's gotta say something, right? Reigned with praise from customers, critics, and culinary insiders, Hot Dogs has routinely been ranked the best dog in Chicago, and was even listed by Bon Appetit magazine as one of the 50 best restaurants on the planet. Oh, and did I mention the French fries cooked in duck fat? This is like the greatest thing that ever happened. <laughs> so who is responsible for all this incredible goodness? This guy, Doug Sohn. Oh, sorry, what would you like on it? Uh, everything? Uh, everything. Yeah. 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 All right. But why hot dogs? It all started, a friend of mine had a bad hot dog one day. And his comment was, you know, how do you make a bad hot dog? And I foolishly said, you know, I think you can, I think people do. The bar is real high here. Yes. People are, I mean, there's like a lot of hot dog joints. And yet, when I started to ask around about these things, the consensus among serious foodies and, and more to the point, serious aficionados of the dog in all of its mutant forms uh, was, was this place. I realized there was no place that did just sausages, which was a food I love. And kind of the idea started forming, the concept started taking shape, and I said, well, let's see if this will fly. And fly it did. But what differentiates a Red Hot from other dogs? It's an all beef, preferred natural casing hot dog. Nice beef, garlic uh, flavor to it. Yellow mustard. And no fancy French stuff. Got no, yellow exactly, mustard. Yellow, yellow mustard, uh, neon green relish, tomatoes, onions, a uh, slice of dill pickle, and then topped with celery salt. There you have it, a dog that is bigger than the sum of its parts. And there are a lot of parts to negotiate. So here's the conundrum with the Chicago-style dog. All the things that make it good to eat also make it hard to kind of hold together. Oh, case in point. Oh, yeah, perfection in a dog. And of course, what's a dog without a mountain of fries to keep it company? Oh, yeah. But not just any kind of fries. I'm talking about fries decadent enough to make Elvis blush like a schoolgirl. The Rolls Royce of fries, fried in pure rendered duck fat. Duck fat fry? Is there a better medium for frying anything? I don't think so. But this is merely a prologue to what is for any carnivore the ultimate inducing item on the menu. Come to daddy. The foie gras dog. A grilled sauterne infused duck sausage with truffle mustard and topped with a generous piling of fresh foie gras. Wow. That's remarkably good. 